Hi, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com. Today I'd like to talk about some tips for sourcing nutrient-dense foods. Oftentimes when people start learning more about food and learning about the nourishing traditions way of eating, wise traditions diet or Weston A. Price foundation and way of eating, the first thing that comes to mind is, okay, but where am I gonna buy this food? Because oftentimes you go to local grocery stores and you just don't find what you're looking for. Now, in recent years, this has been starting to change a bit. You are starting to find more things like pasture-raised eggs and 100% grass-fed meats and things like that in big chain grocery stores. And that's great, so we'll talk about that a little bit. But in general, we don't really wanna be relying 100% on big chain grocery stores anyway. So all of my tips are still hopefully gonna be really helpful. So let's jump in and talk about the different ways that I have come up with to source the highest quality nutrient dense foods. The very first most important tip that I have as far as this goes is to find a farmer or more than one farmer. A local farmer who raises their animals on grass, who's interested in sustainable regenerative agriculture, who has their animals out on grass in the sunshine, trying to feed them the best quality, you know, natural for that type of animal feed that he can, those types of things. Some places to find farmers like that are to be active in your local Weston A. Price chapter. I will have a link below where you can find your local Weston A. Price chapter if you don't know where yours is already in your area. Go to some meetings, even just look on the website. They will have lists of different resources where you can find farmers and different people raising animals the way that you're looking for and growing other types of nutrient dense foods. Really good to get to know the farmer personally though. Go visit the farm, talk to them, find out how they raise their animals. You know, develop a relationship. It's really important just not only for knowing the information about where your food is coming from, something, but something that I feel like we're losing more and more as time goes on is the personal, real relationship with our food being grown, whether we're doing it ourselves or knowing the person who raises it. So anytime that you can have that time of a connection and relationship, I think is really helpful. It'll help you find the highest quality food, it'll help you save money, and it's just great all around. It also will be beneficial for the farmer themselves because this type of farming is not incredibly profitable. You're not making a lot of money when you're raising animals this way. So oftentimes people who are farming using these methods, they need encouragement. They need to meet the people in, in person and see them face to face and be encouraged by the efforts that they're going to. Some money saving tips that are related to you know finding actual farmers to source your food from is that if there's say somebody who raises beef cattle and they're usually selling like half of a of a steer or a quarter at a time you can contact them even if you're not in a position to buy an entire half or quarter quite yet a lot of times people buying beef are not interested in things like the soup bones the fat organ meats all of those things that we know are the most important you know some of the most important cuts on the animal so you can ask him hey do you have some of these that i could buy from you you know can i ask the processor to take them when you have animals going in you know ask about that it can be a really great opportunity sometimes you can even get them for free that way another tip is to find people who hunt this can be really good for anybody who's in like the first stages of the gaps diet or really any time on the gaps diet where you're having a lot of meat stock and you need lots of bones oftentimes people will hunt and they'll have you know those great um, connective tissue rich bones that you want for broth that they don't need and you can ask them if you can have them for free so finding hunters can be really good you can maybe even get meat that way growing your own food is so valuable this is related to what i talked about before about having the connection with your food being grown if you can do it yourself that is the absolute best closest connection that there ever can be so you can do this no matter where you live. If you're in an apartment, you can start growing some containers of herbs. You can start having like a container vegetable garden. You can do the upside down tomato plants. 
There's even way more possibilities beyond that. You can start looking online for ideas. That's just to get you started. And then of course, if you have a yard, the possibilities are even greater. You can do a full vegetable garden. You can have chickens. Depending on where you live and what the rules are, you can even have some smaller animals like goats. So, you know, if you're new to gardening, find a friend who's already into it, get some books, read online. I'll have some resources linked below, but you know, just start. It is so fun. It is, you know, growing your own food and just being involved, whether with animals or plants outside, it does so many things for your health beyond just growing the food. You're spending time outdoors, you're around all the beneficial microbes in the soil and that the animals have. It's uplifting, it's stress relieving, it's fun, it's, it has so many great benefits. So I really encourage you to see what you can do about growing your own food if you aren't already. And if you are already, that's great. See how you can expand upon that. Another thing that I'd like to talk about while we're talking about sourcing nutrient dense foods is to be really careful about getting in too far into buying things that are pre-made. As these different types of diets and ways of eating become a little bit more popular, like say keto and paleo and different things like that, you'll start to see foods packaged that are advertised as being, you know, good for those types of diets. And I personally try to be really careful about that just because the best thing to do always is to just make everything yourself from scratch. Um, it does not have to be time consuming or complicated. I've been showing you some recipes and I have lots more coming up. Um, but the process is what gets tricky. When other people are entrusted with the process, that's when you have to start not trusting as many things about it. So try to keep in your mind, I'm just buying ingredients. I'm buying whole foods in their natural form and then making them myself. Again, don't be scared off by that because it's not time consuming. It, I mean, you can make it time consuming. It's not complicated. But when you're thinking about sourcing food and you're out shopping, you know, keep that in mind. Just stick with the whole um, unprocessed version with whatever you're thinking about buying. With that in mind, now let's talk about the, oh. kind of like the step down, like the next step below being able to source food from farms or growing it yourself. And that is looking in stores. Um, if you can, I like trying to buy things as locally as possible. So like in my area, we have a store called King Supers and they like to source all of their produce as locally as possible. So whenever you can find, you know, even though it is a big chain Kroger grocery store, I do like finding those little things. And um, you know, it can help your decision when you're deciding which store to support when you do need to go to a bigger store. You can also try to find smaller, more independent grocery stores and try to support those. Um, but when you do go to grocery stores, thankfully there are a lot more organic options, locally grown options, things like that. You can look for grass-fed meat from Costco. You can look for pasture-raised eggs in lots of different stores, even Walmart. I have a video coming up soon where I'm going to give a full refrigerator tour and a pantry tour so I can show you kind of some of the things that I do buy at stores and what I choose. And if this is a video has already been up for a while, then those videos are already up. You can go find them on my channel, but that'll kind of narrow down to what I'm talking about. Yeah, so when you're buying food from stores, look for organic when you can, pasture raised, grass fed, you know, look for those different labels. The labels like natural don't really mean much anymore. Organic sadly is losing a lot of its meaning too as those things are not, you know, people try to raise things in less than ideal ways and still label them that way. So try to get as much information that you can. One thing that makes it really helpful when you are shopping in stores is that the Weston A. Price Foundation makes a shopping guide. They update it every year. You can find the latest one on their website. I'll have a link in the description box below. And you can use that to rate. They have, I think, best, good, or best, better, good ratings for different things. So like if you're looking for butter in a store and you're like, which grass-fed butter is the best option here? You can look in that guide and it will tell you. So that's really handy. One of my favorite places also to buy stuff that I don't raise myself or buy from a farmer is from a company called Azure Standard. And they're a nice 
um, smaller local to Oregon state farm that grows a lot of their own stuff and sources really high quality organic foods. I'll have a link to them below, but it's a co-op, so you order once a month and it gets delivered to an area. You go pick it up. You can get really good deals that way. They have good prices, really high quality stuff. I'll have a link below if you want to check that out too. So I personally tend to do, like I said, try to grow stuff myself find local farmers, and then fill in where I need to from Azure, and then as a last resort, go to local grocery stores. Definitely check out the other uh, videos that I have on my channel about nutrient-dense recipes, nourishing recipes. I'll have some of those linked below. Leave me a comment and let me know if you have any tips that you would add to this. Where do you like to source your food from? Also, let me know if you have any further questions about anything, too. I try to reply to all the questions that I get. Check out the description box for the different links that I talked about to sources. There's also some free ebooks and some other goodies down there in that description box. All right, I hope that you found this helpful. I hope that it helped make it a bit easier when you're trying to source nutrient dense foods. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else who you think would find these tips helpful. Here on my channel, I show you how to make nourishing recipes for nutrient dense food, natural remedies, and DIY skincare and home products. So if those are something that you're interested in and you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out two videos every week. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.